All right, I got the notification that we are on YouTube. And it looks like we are good. Uh, you all set, Dr. Pellegrino? All set. All right, it being seven o'clock on Monday, May 10th, 2021, we'll hereby call the meeting of the Gardner School Committee to order. And we will make note that all members of the committee are present here as well. First item on the agenda are recognitions, Dr. Pellegrino. Yeah, so um, first I would like to recognize um, uh, Beth Tata and unfortunately her, her counterpart, the hardworking Corey Kovchinski was not able to make it, but um, both Beth and Corey work with our student council at Elm Street School who um, does a lot of work um, to promote uh, culture and to move the school forward. And it really gives student voice. So, but I, there's no way I can describe it um, anyway near as well as uh, Ms. Tata can. So Ms. Tata, would you mind uh, describing what your student council has done this year and what you do on a regular basis? Oh, no. I'm, not, yeah, I'm sorry. I, yeah, we can hear you. Okay, I didn't hear anything that you just said. So I'm gonna just go with, you're asking me to say um, some of the things that our students did um, and some of the quotes maybe that they said, is that is that what you would like? Okay. That's exactly I'm what sorry. I said, that Ms. Tady. That's exactly awesome. what I said, perfect. All right, so this year has been, as we all know, a very different year. Um, but Ms. Tupchinski and I decided that we really did still want to have student council and give them the opportunity to do that. It's kind of something that the fourth graders aspire to and look forward to. Um, so we're always happy to have the support of our PTO um, who buy us shirts for the students and um, our administration who supports our activities. Um, they attend attended virtual meetings twice a month, and then we started in-person meetings in April. They created cards for the police and fire department, just thanking them for their service. They created kindness posters for the school. Um, Mayor Nicholson gave them a fabulous tour, from what I heard, from Mr. Jinsky. Um, they've sponsored a spirit week. We are currently sponsoring a personal hygiene drive that will benefit the Gardner CAC, and that's until May 14th. And I think we have about six copy paper boxes full of various and sundry things. Um, they read to younger classes during Read Across America Day. They created a project for Black History Month and shared it with the school. And because of COVID, Mrs. McKay is now teaching out on the basketball court. So we have assigned student council members to help her lug her chairs out there um, and set things up and chase any papers that blow away. So those are some of the activities that they've done. Very different than, than what they normally do, but still able to participate. Um, some of the quotes when, when Ms. Tuchinsky and I asked at the last meeting, what are some of the best parts about being in student council? Um, they said, I get to be a leader. I get to help people. I enjoyed the projects and privileges we get to have. I liked meeting the mayor. Um, I liked reading to the younger kids. I liked being able to make decisions. And my favorite one, it made me feel braver to be in charge. So those were some of the comments that they made. Um, Corey and I have been doing this, I think, for maybe about six years or so, and um, we're always very fortunate to work with some very creative um, students and kids who, who really want to be in a leadership role. So we really enjoy it, and we hope that we'll be able to continue doing it for a lot of years to come. Thank you, Ms. Tata. So um, now normally you'd be able to see a bunch of bright, shiny um uh, faces, you know, and unfortunately, so um, because of COVID, I'm just going to read off their names of these students who are so hardworking and um, aren't really looking for recognition, but I think it's important that we read their names into the record um, so they're recognized. Um, so Daisy Babb, Alicia Coronel, Jonathan Lupian, Ava Babb, Michael Akey, Brooke Boucher, Maya Desai, Kendall Gamash, Julian Diaz, Marcella Graves, Addison Zupa, Addison Budro, Mariama Sarah, Sala, Sarah Farley, Sophie Lighton, 
Serena Longton, and Andre Pouverge. I love pronouncing that last name, Pouverge. That's a great name, Andre. But thank you so much, uh, Ms. Tata and Ms. Tufchinsky, for all that you do and the hard work you put into this. And thank you to all the students who make Gardner what it is. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Um, so I'd also like to read into the, um, to the record tonight. Um, for those of you who, who know, MCAS is, you know, a big part of the, the state's um, uh, system for education. And one of, the, one of the benefits of participating in MCAS is you can receive a free, free tuition to state schools. So, and to get that, it's actually um, a John and Abigail Adams scholarship. And you have to be, you have to, um, it's not just about your score, it's you have to be in the top 25% um, of your class. Um, and so I'd like to read the names of the students. Um, who are who are now receiving the, the class of 2021 who are receiving the John and Abigail Adams Scholarship. So Michael Aiello, Max Boucher, Nicholas Karen, Emma Caruso, Chase Caton, Megan Columbus, Brent Coxell, Abby Fluitt, Skylar Grenier, Jacob Guerra, Thomas Hall, Ethan Hutchins, Natalie Johnson, Lauren Comberg, Ashley LeBlanc, Isabel Lembeck, Alice Lemieux, Hannah Levesque, Kiera Moore, An Nguang, no, I'm sorry, Nguyen, Caleb Perra, Charles Perro, David Pickles, Madeline Pierre, Lily Plotkin, Luke Powers, Shelby Price, Brian Richard, Kyle Sampson, Madeline Schaefer, Samuel Time, Axel Watson, Serena Wida, and Ava Williams. And if I hacked up your name, I apologize, but we will get it right for graduation. I promise. <clears throat> um, so those are the students, though, who are getting the John and Abigail Adams Scholarship. We're very proud of their hard work and their scholarship. So congratulations to all of them. And so with that said, those are the uh, honorees for tonight. Thank you very much, Dr. Pellegrino. And since I neglected to read the uh, opening beforehand, before we had uh, Ms. Tate, I'm just going to read it now just to make sure we are covered that way pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 20. And the governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Gardner School Committee is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be, made, will be made sure to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings provided for in this order. A, a reminder that persons who would like to listen to or view this meeting while in progress may do so on the city's YouTube channel or through watching Gardner Educational Television. If Despite our best efforts, we are not able to provide for real-time access. We will post a record of this meeting on the city's website as soon as possible following its conclusion. I had read the uh, public hearing one for the public hearing that we had at six this evening and I uh, just combined the two in my head. So now that that's done and out of the way, we can move on to the consent agenda for this evening and we'll entertain a motion to a floor to adopt the consent agenda as presented. Move to adopt the consent agenda. Second. Motion made by Mr. Schwartz, seconded by Mr. Aber. where this <clears throat> is a uh, meeting being conducted via remote participation. All votes have to be conducted via Zoom, uh, roll call. Mr. Oh. Schwartz. Mr. Schwartz? Yes. Ms. Hurst? Yes. Mr. Lafreniere? Yes. Mrs. Cormier? <clears throat> yes. Mr. Aber? Yes. Attorney Palavin? Yes. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda, reports of the subcommittee's facility subcommittee is up first, Mr. Schwartz. Uh, good evening. Uh, facilities committee met on uh, April 27th at 4 p.m. Uh, we had concerns about uh, schools going back to full operation. And uh, so we were concerned about that, but everybody reported back. There were, there were no hiccups in any of the schools and any of the operations. Uh, the students coming back, 
transportation services, food servicing, food, uh, food service, everything worked as planned and prepared for. Uh, we, we were concerned about updates on Morrow's cleaning services, no issues about the cleaning, but uh, we did express concerns about some of the Morrow's employees between uh, Elm Street School and the middle school seem to be leaving early in the, in the evening, not according to published schedules. So Dr. Gogan and uh, Mr. Anderson, the director of facilities, are investigating with Mara whether there's been a change of hours or whether they're leaving early or something. So by next meeting, we should have a resolve on that concern. Uh, new maintenance work order program, uh, the uh, Garden Middle School new roof wasn't on the project, but that's soon to be corrected. And doc, Dr. Per Pellegrino and Dr. Gogan chimed in and said that they're still gathering information about the submittal of the letter of intent. I think that's what you call it, to the school building committee to get a middle school replacement roof or repair. So that, that will be, it either is in or soon to go in, one or the other. We'll find out by the next, uh, next meeting. We asked Mr. Anderson about uh, ready, readiness issues at Watkins Field. No issues whatsoever. Everything's working the way it should. All he did say that he was either going to order or did order a six foot aerator to use in all the other grass playing and training fields. Uh, that This is a huge machine towed behind the tractor, which actually punches holes into, into, the, into the ground and the grass. And that allows for more insertion of water when it rains and also for easier digestion of fertilizers and, and maybe some grass seed that'll go in. And that's, that's something that should be done about twice a year. That's what I do to my, my grass. Um, I presented various pictures that I've taken about the, the middle school and the high school. And uh, you should have copies of those pictures in your packet. Uh, the first one I believe is uh, blocks on pillars underneath the canopy at the middle school. Uh, the blocks are separating and there's also some missing components uh, to the pillars. Uh, the next one is um, the back side of the high school, the back, I mean, the back entry door of the middle school, excuse me. And you see there's rust going down uh, the right side of all the metal work. That's from either a missing gutter or a very uh, gutter in very poor condition. The water runs down when the roof from the, from the gym uh, from rain or, or snow and ice melting. So that needs to be attended to. And then there were a couple of pictures from the high school. Uh, one was the sawdust collector from the wood shop that looks rather gungy and rusty. And then the short distance from that is an aluminum room ventilator in the shop area that the cap is literally hanging off. I, I bring these to your attention because I look at it as the broken window theory, if you ever heard of it. Uh, you know, you notice a broken window and you say, well, it ought to be taken care of. And it doesn't. The next thing you look, there is no window or there is no door and it just gets worse and worse. So plus it deters from the pristine appearance of our buildings and it really needed to be attended to. Mr. Anderson said that uh, they'll be on the list, but they'll be taken care of during the summer. We'll be hiring some summer people to do that, to take care of that. So if the school committee, if they want, or members of the public find issues about the school questions, please contact any member of the committee uh, and we'll, we'll answer them and 
try to attend to him best I can. That's the committee's report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Mr. Swartz. Are there any questions, comments from the members of the committee? Um, I just had one question. In the um, facilities project list that we received, is that part of the school dude software that we have? Yes, that yes it is. That? Okay. Yes, it is. We, we need to monitor that to keep Mr. Anderson straight, so. Any other questions, comments, concerns? All right, without seeing none, we'll move on to the finance subcommittee, Mr. Lafrenia. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the finance subcommittee <laughs> met on uh, May 3rd. Uh, we started the meeting with just reviewing the uh, finance packet for the month of April. Um, we also talked about uh, legal expenses. Um, looks like there's gonna be a little bit of a surplus in that line. Uh, not all the bills have been uh, submitted yet or probably by now have, but it still looked like there was going to be a surplus there. Uh, also, we're going to probably, well, there is a surplus of roughly $30,000 in the snow removal uh, line item. They'll, they'll, uh, that'll be transferred to take care of um, various repairs and maintenance uh, projects throughout the district. Um, also, we went, there should be a potential savings um, for the 2021 school year uh, in transportation, uh, both regular and special ed uh, transportation. Uh, we'll get an, a complete update on that for our next meeting. Um, there's also credits uh, that we still have, electricity credits from National Grid. Um, and uh, those credits will be applied uh, to other electric bills uh, that will have a deficit for the year. Uh, Dr. Gogan requested um, a renewal of the Whitson's Food Service, Whitson's Food Service contract, uh, which will come up later on on our agenda for a vote. Um, <clears throat> Let's see, the enrollment also is projected to be uh, lower. Uh, so the uh, revenues obviously be lower. There'll be an anticipated deficit of approximately $25,885. Uh, we also uh, are requesting a student and staff meal price uh, increase that needs to be done because the prices have to um, align with the current required uh, meal prices. Uh, some of them, I, well, uh, we had two that were lower than what was required. So we are gonna have to increase those, uh, not by much. Um, and so we have, so, so we talked over the, uh, about registrations for kindergarten. As of right now, we have 67 students registered. Maybe it's increased since our last meeting, um, but that, that number usually uh, goes, increases much more uh, as we get closer to the new year. Um, and I believe that was it for the meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Lafrenia. Is there any questions, comments, concerns from the members of the school committee? Seeing none, we'll move on to policy subcommittee, Mrs. Hurst. Uh, the policy subcommittee met on uh, April 15th. Um, we had seven policies that night that uh, didn't require any changes. And we have three tonight for first read. Um, that would be CBI, Evaluation of the Superintendent, JFEB, School Choice, and JIC, Superint uh, Student Discipline. Um, <clears throat> we've worked really hard with the manual and getting everything up to date, um, aligning things with MASC, the Mass Association of School Committees. And I just wanted to thank um, Mrs. Plavin and Mrs. Cormier for their dedication because we have made it to the end of the, we've made it all the way through the, the binder with all the policies, everything's up to date. Um, you know, we're in line with where we're supposed to be. And um, 
you know, it, I couldn't have done it without you guys. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. Very um, much. And we actually don't have to meet again for a little while, just because. <laughs> thank you very much, Mrs. Hurst. Uh, is there any questions, comments, concerns on the items that are being presented for first reading this evening that does not require a vote, but information purposes? I just wanted to comment also, thank thank the policy subcommittee. That's that's. <laughs> And uh, thank God I don't have to do it. <laughs> I appreciate you guys <laughs> taking that on. Uh, and great, you don't have to meet <laughs> for a while. That's good. But thanks a lot. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, item number 3280, COVID-19 data dashboard updates. Dr. Pellegrino. You're on mute, Mark. One of these days, I'm going to remember every time I'm on mute. Um, thank you. Um, so, uh, ben, as I was just saying, our phenomenal school nurse leader um, has uh, updated our dashboard. She actually updated it today because we had um, a couple of cases from last week, and she wanted to be sure that you um, knew about all of the cases. Right now, our current positive cases are we have six, two of them are staff, four students. We have zero staff that are on quarantine um, and zero staff that actually tested positive after the exposure. As you know, we participate in the rapid antigen test. Um, so then um, with, the four, with the four students, um, the, the, all four students were in-person students um, and the number of um, students who are quarantining um, is one. So we've had, and for our pool testing, I think it's important to bring that up. Um, we had 435 tests. Out of them, we had one positive test. Um, so our seven-day test positivity rate is 0.99. Um, yep. And that's the weekly dashboard. Oops, that's the old one. That was my batting well, average. I gave you the most up-to-date um, dashboard. You know, we're on top of this. We're still communicating as, you know, um, we're putting out uh, district um, uh, letters whenever there's um, whenever there's um, something that happens in the district, and we're also um, sending out classroom letters if something happens in a in a parent in a student's classroom. And of course, if there's anything to do with close contact, we're making personal phone calls. Um, I say we again, the phenomenal stu student nurse leader and her staff um, are the ones who are making those phone calls, which yeah, take up a lot of time. Um, and they're really accurate about who they, um, um, how they're quarantining students. You know, sometimes it's easier to quarantine a whole class. Our staff does not do that. We, we, we um, go by the book and ensure that any student that can be in school is in school. So any questions on that? I'd like to just make a comment about that. Um, first of all, it's a very helpful graphic to have, but I just wanna say as a parent, Having the pool testing has made not just me, but my family much more comfortable with my daughter going into the school buildings where she's too young to be vaccinated and the rest of us are. Knowing that she's going and she's getting tested every week um, when she is around other people, is just making us, us much more comfortable. And I hope that more people, um, more parents and families within the district are taking advantage of that because it's so good to have her back in school, but it's also reassuring to us to know that such care is being taken while she's at school. Great point. Thank you, Rachel. Any other questions, comments, concerns? I can't see everyone because of the shared screen. So if you do have one, just feel free to uh, speak up. And now I can see everyone. All right, moving on to the next item, item number 3281, vaccine update. Dr. Pellegrino, do you have anything for this one? If not, I can jump on with some stuff as well. No, um, we've 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 done uh, we've had a couple of questions about um, students being vaccinated. Um, obviously, we have not moved on to that step at this you know at this point. Um, but that's pretty much all I have. We're just not there yet. Uh, so on uh, my end of things, we do still have just over a thousand appointments available for this week for anyone sixteen and older. Uh, so if any students are looking to get vaccinated. 
uh, this week. There are plenty of appointments. We are holding clinics tomorrow, Wednesday, and Thursday at the PACC for Pfizer doses of the vaccine. And there will be a Johnson & Johnson clinic on Saturday uh, this week as well. They are all, again, you register online through the city's website, or if you're calling during work hours, you can call through the city's call center as well. Uh, but there are plenty appointments that if you want an appointment, you can get one. Uh, this afternoon, Governor Baker did announce at the time saying when uh, vaccines become available for the next age group that the federal, the state's plan right now is to vaccinate students at pop-up vaccination sites at the schools in which they attend. And then two hours after he announced that the Federal Food and Drug Administration did approve the use of Pfizer vaccines for those 12 to 15. Um, so we expect the state's regulations to come shortly after that. We don't know whether or not the governor had advanced notice that that was coming within hours of him making a comment saying that was the state's preliminary plan. Um, but there is some stuff that it will be coming out shortly. But again, the state's saying that right now for students who fit into that age group, it'd be something that's done at the schools that they attend. And that's as of today. Any questions, comments, concerns? All right, moving on. Item number 3282, return to in-person K through 12. Dr. Pellegrino. Um, actually, no, that's you must have an old agenda. We've already okay. returned. There's been, I can say this, there's been no issues. I think um, the teachers and staff have done a great, great job. Um, very smooth transition. Uh, so next item on my agenda, uh, item number 3283, kindergarten registration, Dr. Pellegrino. Yes, kindergarten registration. So right now, I, I think um, um, it was mentioned before, we have about 67 students who are signed up for kindergarten. We just put another um, ad in the paper. Apparently the date was wrong though. So, you know, luckily the TNG was nice enough to, um, um, unfortunately they had run our old ad. Um, so they're actually redo, um, they're going to put in the correct ad again um, and make sure that, um, that it's accurate. To, we're really trying to get people registered. Usually what happens is there's this big surge in August, which just makes things harder for us to plan. How many teachers do we need? Um, uh, what are the resources we need? So we're trying to encourage people to um, come in earlier. Actually staff took a couple days during April vacation um, to come in and, uh, and register um, some kindergarten students to try to get it um, going, but there really was not, um, we really did not have the, the number that we're, that we're looking for. So we're encouraging people to, uh, to register as soon as possible for kindergarten um, so we can uh, best plan for a, a great opening for the 2021-2022 um, school year. Thank you very much. Any comments from the school committee? All right, seeing none, moving on to item number 3284, summer school, Dr. Pellegrino. So summer school, we, we typically have a Title I summer school, an extended year program for students with special needs, which we are going to obviously do. We've actually um, extended it as well um, to um, uh, students with um, uh, significant special needs even further. Um, so those are, those are some things that we've done. We're also though cooperating with um, Narragansett, Ash West um, and Quabbin to um, ensure that we have enough courses for our high school level students. One of the things that we're concerned about for this summer, it's very, it's, it's sometimes difficult to get enough teachers um, to run some of the courses that you, that you need to make sure that kids can um, keep up because at the high school level, you're earning credits. So it's really important that we have enough classes. Well, what we've decided is we know that this summer, we might not have as many volunteer, I say volunteer, we might not have any teacher, as many teachers wanting to do summer school because they're wanting a break because they're working so hard right now. So we're concerned about that. So we're taking a regional approach to this um, where we'll, we may have between all four of our schools, we might have enough teachers. And then we may do some, uh, what would happen is if I didn't have, for example, a world history class and I needed world history, students would still come to Gardner, but would actually stream the world history class, let's say from Ash West into Gardner and vice versa. So we're all doing that for each other um, to try to make sure we're getting kids what they need. And, you know, sometimes the regional approach um, you know, you can get more, um, uh, have a wider, um, a better economy of scale. Let me just put it that way. So um, I'm actually excited about the collaboration. You know, it just shows how we're all trying to work together. These are tough times and it's not going to be um, simply done just by acting alone. So um, I'm excited for that. Any comments from the school committee? I like that. That's thinking outside the box. Thank you. 
All right, moving on to the next item on the agenda, 3285 MCAS, Dr. Pellegrini. MCAS, so today was uh, actually the first day. Um, it was um, Elm Street and Gardner High School that were doing the MCAS. As, um, as you all um, know, for MCAS, grade 11 actually had a, um, uh, their requirement to take the MCAS was waived as a graduation requirement if, if they um, meet certain criteria. Um, however, the students could take the MCAS to still be able to receive, um, to earn the uh, John and Abigail Adams scholarship. Our 10th graders who are in person were also taking the test. We invited students who are remote to also take the test now. If they don't take it now, they will have to take it in the fall. Um, so MCAS as a graduation requirement is still um, here and we have to adhere to that for um, you know, our current students. Um, the grades three through eight are also taking the MCAS. Right now we did it in person, but there's also a virtual option where the students will be able to take the test at home. Um, if they are fully remote, they, they would take the test at home. Um, that's not something we've had to do yet. So this is gonna be very new to everyone, including the state, um, because obviously this is not something that they've ever planned for or tried to do. So today went very smoothly. Again, we have a great tech director and a great tech department and the principals and staff work really well together. So things went very smoothly without any real glitches um, at all. So I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased the first day it went well. I'm gonna be interested to see how that first day of remote MCAS you know, works and we'll see, um, um, we'll see how it goes. We're all dependent on that, that system, so. And so that's my MCAS update. Any comments from the school committee? All right, moving on. Item number 3284, a food services contract renewal. Dr. Pellegrino. Um, so um, in your, I, I believe in your packet, you have the, um, the renewal for um, food service with Whitson's. Um, I have to say, you know, Whitson's, you know, as a, as a um, service for us has been, you know, very good and very responsive. They've done a great job. Um, I think we're in year one of a three one one contract. So after three years, you can up, you know, you can update it one year and then you can update it a, a fifth year. Um, and I, during the pandemic, they've just done a phenomenal job of working collaboratively with us to make sure that um, uh, we're making sure to feed uh, the folks um, in the city. So we're real. I think they've been very supportive of us, of our students, and of the community. Um, so um, this is a this is a required vote. Um, you know, my recommendation to the school committee is that we continue for, you know, another year with Whitson's. Is there a motion on the floor? I'd like to make motion that we continue the contract with Whitson's. Seconded. Motion made by Mr. Lafreniere, seconded by Mr. Abair to uh, vote to extend the contract with Whitson's for one year. Is there any discussion on the motion? I agree with uh, Dr. Pellegrino. They've been phenomenal with our community. And um, I honestly see no reason why we wouldn't want to have them around. <laughs> Any other comments? Seeing none, we'll put the matter to a vote. Mr. Schwartz. Yes. Mrs. Hurst. Yes. Mr. Lafrenia. Yes. Mrs. Cormier. Yes. Mr. Aver. Last one, the audio. Oh, you're good. Good. Go yes. Okay. I don't know if I get called, but you did. Go ahead. <laughs> in absentia. <laughs> Attorney Palaven. Yes. Motion carries unanimously. We got you there, Coach. Uh, next item on the agenda: three, two, eight, seven. Student staff meal prices. Dr. Pellegrino. Um. So you have in your packet the increased prices. We don't have the actual prices. Can we come back? Can we take that one out of order and come back to that? Let me get the actual prices for you. For some reason, I don't have that in my packet either. Yeah. If there's no objection, we can certainly take that out of order right now. Uh, next item on the agenda, item number 3288, the 2021-2022 school budget. And there is a vote required on this. And just as a reminder to everyone, we had the hearing on this this earlier this evening at 6 p.m. Uh, are there any questions, other, any other questions, comments, concerns about the school budget? No, I think Mr. Pellegrino does a great job presenting it and giving all the reasons for everything, so. 
I don't see how anyone has any questions. I'm sure you could do it in your sleep. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing it in my sleep, John, yes. <laughs> I guess I've been around a long time because I remember the school budgets less than $20 million. Been around too long, I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right, is there a motion on the floor? Move to, to adopt. adopt the budget. Is there a second? Of $35 million. Seven hundred thousand seven hundred ninety-one dollars. I'll second that. Motion made by Mr. Schwartz, seconded by Mrs. Hurst, to adopt a school budget for the 2021-2022 school year of thirty-five million seven hundred thousand seven hundred ninety-one dollars and zero cents. Is there any discussion on the motion, Dr. Pellegrino? Can you unshare your screen, please? So I can yes. <laughs> any discussion on the motion? I just want to add that I'm looking forward very much to the new uh, elementary band program coming back into play. And I know I said that at an earlier meeting, but that makes me happy to see again. Uh, any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll put the matter to a vote. Mr. Schwartz? Yes. Mrs. Hurst? Yes. Mr. Lafrenier? Yes. Mrs. Cormier? Yes. Mr. Aber. Yes. And Attorney Palavin? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. Next item on the agenda, item number 3289, curriculum coordinator update. This was provided in your packet uh, for information. Are there any questions, comments, concerns? All right. Good job, Dr. Gogan. I see you're with us too. Just want to thank you very much for your report. Very detailed. Yep. Next item on the agenda, item number 3290, special education update. This was also provided in the packets for information. Uh, for any members of the public who are watching, um, these uh, updates are all included on the city's website uh, as part of the agenda centers packet in which you can see that. So if you ever do wonder what's written in them, there is a lot of good information in there, but we make sure that those are available to the public all the time. So if you do have any questions on those, you can feel free to just go on the city's website and read those at any time. Any questions, comments, concerns on the special education update? All right, thank you very much, Ms. West for your update. Item number 3291, Grants Administrators Update. Again, this was provided in the packet for information purposes. Is there any questions, comments, concerns? All right, next item on the agenda, item number 3292, MSBA New School Building Project. Uh, Attorney Palavin, you said you wanted to share some information with the committee on this one? Um, yes, I did. Uh, so I think it was two weeks ago, the new school, the school building committee toured the site, which was quite interesting to see it in person. Um, we are trying to plan a time for the school committee to also um, tour the site. And hopefully if we get some better weather here soon, um, I'll try, I'll be reaching out to try to organize that. Obviously it'll be a posted meeting um, since we'll all be able to attend and, you know, we'll all get to see what they've done. I've heard that it looks drastically different already compared to what I saw last time. So I can't wait to see it again. Thank you very much, Attorney Palavin. I do want to uh, let everyone know that we did receive some drone footage from Dr. Hammond today that was sent out to the city council and myself. Uh, with the drone footage from January and the drone footage from last week. So you could kind of see the progress of the construction as well. So that's very neat. So we were able to share that and we will try to get that out in as many ways as possible as well. Those two videos were quite impressive. Mary. I like to like them very much. Much. Any other questions, comments, concerns on the new school? All it's right. going to be quite an impressive building. Uh, uh, we've seen drawings and blueprints and things like that, but when you walk up the hill and you look around and you see the massiveness of the building, it's it's quite impressive. Quite impressive. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on in the agenda, item F, communications, Dr. Pagrin. Actually, we, we, uh, oh. we're going to take out of order the, um, the student price. meal prices, and that's why I brought um, Dr. Gogan in, um, so she could explain it, because she can do so much more eloquently than I can. All right, so we'll go back to item number 3287, student staff meal pricing. Dr. Gogan, nice to meet you, or see you again, rather. <laughs> you also, thank you. Um, so I just wanted to give you a little bit of background information on the student meal pricing. The USDA sets a minimum required 
meal price so that the um, so that the meal program doesn't solely run on reimbursements from from the state or the federal government's national school lunch program. And so each year we have to fill out uh, what we call a price adjustment calculator. And based on the prices that we currently have, we have to ha set incremental increases um, anywhere from six to eight cents per year, rather than set our, our prices at six to eight cents additional every year, which would require a vote every year, and then also have sort of crazy prices like 327 or something like that. Um, so we like to every few years just set one in one larger incremental price increase that will last us for a few years. So at the last calculation, our um, prices would have required a three dollar weighted average price for meals. And currently we have a price of $3.10 for middle school and high school lunches and $2.85 for the elementary lunches. Um, this year we all had free lunch due to COVID and next year they, we will continue to have that. Uh, but when we were at the finance committee meeting uh, this month, we, we thought it might be a good idea to have a conversation about setting a new price for the FY uh, for the 22-23 school year, would, which it would take effect when the moratorium on um, the free meals goes away. And so this, this item is on the agenda for your discussion, potentially a vote this month, but um, perhaps a vote at least by, by the June meeting so that we could give families the year to prepare for for an increase in food prices, knowing that it would be not this coming school year, but the following school year. So in order to have an incremental cost increase that would last us for a few years, you might um, you, you may be looking at anywhere from a, a 15 to maybe 20 or 25 cent increase, and that would be for your discussion um, in your decision. Are there any questions from the school committee? On this, so uh, we oh. don't have to set pricing. We did we discuss what we're going to do for the pricing? We did. We did not. Okay. All right. So apparently, our, so we should probably move this uh, to the next meeting, and so we can everyone can get all the pricing ahead of time, and then we can do the vote on it for our next full school committee. There's no objection to that recommendation. We can certainly table this for now and bring that to the next school committee meeting in June. Yeah. Move to table it till the next meeting next month. Okay. Is there a second? Oh, I'll second that. Sorry. Motion made by Mr. Schwartz, seconded by Attorney Palavin. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we'll put the matter to a vote. Mr. Schwartz? Yes. Mrs. Hurst? Yes. Mrs. Cormier? Yes. Mr. Abner? Yes. Mr. Lafrenier? Yes. And Attorney Palavin? Yes. Motion carries. This will be brought up in the next month's school committee meeting. Thank you, Dr. Gogan. You're welcome. All right. Now, item F, communications, Dr. Pellegrino. Yes. Um, thank you. Um, so first off, one of the great things about, you know, um, uh, this whole working through Zoom and this pandemic is we've done a lot more things electronically, so we've saved a lot of paper. Unfortunately, though, when I don't have a piece of paper, Sometimes I have a list of two pages and I don't realize that I have two pages because I don't have two physical pages in my hand. So I realized that there was a whole other list of students um, from Gardner Academy who also got the John and Abigail Adams scholarship. So to do them justice, I'm not going to read them their names at the end of this committee meeting. Instead, I will read those names at the next school committee meeting. Um, but, you know, I have to say, so my communications, I just want to say, I can't believe how many things are moving along. And it's only because, you know, I put at the beginning of most of my presentations, you know, we're the hardest working district. Everybody is working hard. From the maintenance staff, um, mm -hmm. the folks who are, you know, um, cleaning the building, our teachers, our um, tutors, our paras, our RBT all of our staff, principals, everybody's working extremely hard to make sure that um, Gardner Public Schools is working well. And that includes the school committee. So thank you for all for your support. 
Um, I think this has been actually, this is where we show our grit um, is in tough times. And I think once again, Gardner has shown its grit um, in terms of being a hardworking community uh, who cares a lot about our community. So that's really all I had to say. I'm really excited about the new school. Um, although I am kind of excited to have this school year done and we're winding down and that feels kind of good. All right, uh, next item on the agenda, item G, final comments of the school committee, Mr. Schwartz. Um, the weather's getting better. The kids are in school and doing great. Teachers as usual are working hard. New school is well underway. We have nothing but good things to look forward to. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Schwartz. Mrs. Hurst. I wanted to just congratulate all the students who um, are getting the um, John and Abigail Adams scholarships. Um, I was counting them as Dr. Pellegrino was reading off the names and I, I came up with 34. So if there's more from um, Galt, then, uh, you know, that's a pretty impressive number. Um, and um, thank you to uh, Zeta for uh, being here in the beginning. Um, the kids with the school council, I, it's so important to be involved in these things. Um, and just to touch on what Mr. Schwartz said, yeah, it's all good. <laughs> Mr. Abe. Um, hey, you're not going to have to do, uh, you're going to lose some of your superintendent's duties now with this, with all the electronic stuff. No more, no, no more school snow days. Okay. <laughs> Everything's remote learning when it, when it snows. We don't have to call anybody off. Um, this is a shout out to Principal McMorrow, the voice of Gardner High School football this year. A lot of people didn't know that he was there. Uh, you know, the kids love it when there's teachers and staff doing stuff, but when it's an administrator, that's really a big thing. Uh, you know, he's given a lot of time over the years. He used to do the change at the football game. You know, I think that, you know, there, there may be a place for him in this play-by-play -play announcing thing, okay? He's, he did a pretty good job. I used to do that once in a while. I was always worried about what verbiage I might use, but uh, uh, he did a, a fantastic job, and it shows a lot to the kids. Uh, uh, I know a principal at a school around here one year went to practice one day every day with the with the, one of the sports teams in full regalia. I don't think he wore a skirt in field hockey, but he was in everything else. Which, and I'll close with this little a condensed story of my my administration experience in high school. And now I, I know you find this hard to believe, but I get into a little trouble once in a while with some of the football guys. Um, Four of us got caught doing something, so we were taken to the vice principal. The principal took over and and told us to go to football practice after school and even told the coach to give us a ride down so we'd be there on. Where's the rest of the story? Oh, no. The <laughs> hanger there is. I am not going to sleep tonight. Coach? In the United States Marine Corps. Coach. Coach. Okay. Jim. Jim. And, no, no. All we got was they asked you to bring you to practice so you weren't late. Well, well so he get, the principal gets out of the car. He has he has his football spikes on, his khaki fatigues, his, his baseball undershirt, and the United States Marine Corps ca cap. We lost you again. Where's the commercials? Oh no, Jim, Coach. Lifelong impressions on the students from school to school. Mr. Aber, Mr. Aber, we lost you at Marine Corps hat, and I feel like okay. it's in the end of that. No, Jim, well, Jim, 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 Jim. Indiana Joe, Marine Corps hat. So we he comes down in and takes us onto a block of seven man sled with four guys for an hour and a half. Okay. We learned our lesson that day. And I remember administrators, you know, for the rest of my life, they'll, they'll stick in my mind. And next month I'll tell you the story how us and the football coach with the help of the football coach moved the vice principal's sob 
into the shop and locked it away, and the police came because he thought his car was stolen. So, <laughs> a little levity, okay? <laughs> oh, thank you very much, Coach. That was worth all of the commercial breaks we had in there. Yeah, it was. Oh, <laughs> censored in some states. Um, Mr. Oh, thanks, Coach. That was great. Um, you know, last month we started with, with celebrating our kids, and this month we celebrated by celebrating the kids, and I think that's just the best way to start every meeting. So I just want to recognize the kids who um, – you know, a part of that student council at Elm Street and the kids who are recognized for the John and Abigail Adams scholarship. They work so hard and they deserve all that recognition. Um, also class of 2021, their time is coming. Um, we're coming up on graduation in a few weeks and I hope that they really get to enjoy the end of their senior year and all their celebrations um, and do it safely and make good choices. Um, so that's all I have to say this month. Thank you. Attorney Palavin, you are on mute. I just wanted to mention that um, last week was Teacher Appreciation Week, and I wanted to say thank you to all of the teachers and the support staff for everything they've done this year. Obviously, it hasn't been an easy year, and we've been making it through. Um, also, I, on May 12th, which I think is Wednesday, is National School Nurse Day, um, and I think this year we would have been completely lost without our school nurses. They have done so much work. Becky McCaffrey has had to answer all my phone calls about all my COVID questions all the time. Um, and they really helped us with all the guidance, protocol, everything. And thank you to all of the school nurses. Um, and then obviously congratulations to the kids who received the scholarships and to the Elm Street Student Council for all they've done. It's amazing the work that kids can do when they really put their mind to it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I have a couple of things on my list here. Um, as someone who can't speak during the meetings for a lot of things, I kind of keep a running list here during the things I think of. So uh, excuse somewhat of a little bit of a long list this month, but I do want to say that the city council did approve the MSBA letter of intent as well. And I signed that uh, the next day. So that should be all set in terms of who needs to approve that before that gets sent. Uh, and the city clerk does have all of that information available there as well, including the original signed copies of the vote that uh, if you need a copy of the certified vote. Uh, we said earlier that the vaccines are going to soon be extended to those ages 12 to 15, and they are in the final stages of the um, work to release the vaccines for those six and up. Uh, however, that is still coming probably sometime in the summer months from what we're hearing now, but we are hearing from Governor Baker that they do want to start potentially doing some vaccines available in the school's parking lots or pop-up sites at the schools themselves. Um, this is not a requirement for students to have in order to attend public school, but it is something that will be offered to all students who want it. So that's something that we do want to make out there. And again, there are plenty of vaccine appointments available for anyone who wants to participate in those. We did receive an increased allotment for the Farmers to Family Food Box program that's being held over at the CAC. We are up to 325 boxes, up from our 200 that we were receiving before. So we do have some more. And again, contact the CAC. Uh, or go on their Facebook page and there's an online registration form too. So that way you can make sure you get a box since we are still far under the thousand that we were originally receiving. However, all your information is kept private and confidential. Uh, the senior class, I just wanna mention that they're having their car parade on May 22nd. I unfortunately cannot be around because I am graduating that morning at my own graduation. However, uh, the, we will have a banner there from all of the city employees as well to help congratulate the the students and kind of wish them well before graduation. With that said, I do, as someone who is uh, taking my last final tomorrow, I also want to just give our seniors a little bit of encouragement there to push through this last tail end. I understand what it's like trying to get through the uh, senioritis and everything that comes with it, uh, but it's all worth it in the end. We, uh, you know, wish you best of luck on the end of your school year since the next time the school committee meets won't be till after your graduation. We just wanna, from all of us, uh, best of luck as you uh, continue going forward through this school year and enjoy every, every uh, senior activity that we have planned in lieu of the traditional stuff that would happen in a non-pandemic year. It's different, but it'll still be just as fun if you make it fun. You, you know, just go into it with an open mind and enjoy every second of it because it's there for you to enjoy. I uh, wanna say thank you to our teachers as well. Um, we are planning something at the end of the year to thank our teachers officially, but because Attorney Palavin did point out last week was Teacher Appreciation Week, I just wanted to say thank you here as well. And lastly, just a reminder that May is mental health Awareness Month, and last week was Children's Mental Health Week, and uh, the city just, on behalf of the city, just if you are um, having any issues, please do contact someone you trust, be it someone in the schools, 
um, someone in your community do what you need to to make sure you have the resources you need to just relax and uh, take care of your own mental health. It's a, you know been a really trying year for everyone. Um, we want to make sure that everyone has the resources they need to be successful and feel comfortable where they are. And that's in our schools, that's in our community, that's everywhere. So we just want to make sure or everyone knows that that's our commitment as well to make sure that um, anyone who's struggling knows that they can reach out to someone too. And with that, that's all I have for this evening. Uh, and with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion made by Attorney Palavin, seconded by Mr. Schwartz. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. We'll see each other next month. Have a good uh, time, everyone. Take care, everybody. Bye, everybody.